Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. The American Southwest is like no other place on Earth. Epic in its history, both natural and human, it has been sculpted in intriguing ways over the millennia. It's a landscape that invites the explorer to see how the Earth creates art with the simplest of elements. I'm Art Wolf. Join me on Travels to the Edge. a lifetime to explore the American Southwest, but it would be a lifetime well spent. The Southwest covers a large geographic area spanning several states. We'll be focusing on two of them, Arizona and Utah. While this unique region was shaped by the forces of nature, it has also been touched by the hand of man. Because of the distances, we'll be road tripping a bit, starting in Arizona and then heading into Utah. Canyon de Chez is one of the most significant formations of the Southwest. The Navajo Nation revere this place for its history. I'm fortunate that my guide here in Canyon de Chez is James Yazi, a Navajo man that grew up in this canyon. Canyon de Chez is spectacular, not only for the beautiful cliffs all the way up through the deepest recesses, but also for the groves of golden cottonwood that grow along the river. It's so open, you can see everywhere, and the pace of the horses really allows you to bring in the beauty to really appreciate the land. In addition to the natural beauty of this canyon, there's these very significant panels of rock art. Okay, nice. When you first come across a panel, what are you feeling? Are you feeling the same kind of excitement that I feel when I come across this? Or? Uh, oh yeah, these are really, that I mentioned, they're a really spiritual place to me. So it gives me the chill sometimes. Why do you think that the early people made these? These are probably made for, mainly from my point, they're probably a representation of ceremonies. So what would you speculate from the very first people that would put some figurines on this wall to the last? How, how long of a time are we spanning here? Probably a little over four to 5,000 oh. years people has been occupying the canyon. They had such distinct styles from the Anasazi to the Navajo to the Puebloan peoples, each had a very unique way of recording the human form. There's very, very little destruction. Yeah, there's hardly anybody visits these sites, and even us native here, we kind of like stay away. Spiritually, these are really unique sites. That's why we don't touch these. I mean, it's really hard to describe in words. <laughs> Anasazi both painted and then carved into the rock. Yeah, pictograph or paintings and then petroglyph are carved, etched into the canyon wall. And the walls here like sandstone, it's very soft canyon sandstone. So that would be typically yeah. not in an alcove, not an possibly alcove, right yeah. out there on the wall. Usually petroglyphs are on the open main canyon walls.
This is quite a panel. This is a lot of petroglyphs. Tell me a little bit about this wall. It's amazing. And this site here, we call it the newspaper wall. I can't really understand why they call it newspaper rock. I mean, it just unfolds. Human figures, animal figures, bird figure, astronomy figure, plant figure, a lot of different designs. And these are the, the petroglyphs. Wall. Petroglyphs, they're all carved into the main canyon wall right above the little lids here. And this is largely Anasazi. Anasazi and also a lot of Navajo rock art. And it's a record of the people that lived here. This is great, great light. It's so oblique to the rock that they stand out so beautifully. There's almost a three-dimensional quality to the way the light is falling across these petroglyphs. You know, it almost gives it volume. This is one of Kenyon Deshaies' classic locations. It's a Anasazi ruin known as House Beneath the Rock. It's amazing how they've built these very, very large structures, high on a wall, protected from potential enemies, really tucked away under this great overhang. It's such a classic, really beautiful location. The context of the environment, the beautiful texture of the wall, and also the shadows make it a really intriguing image for me. This is the perfect conditions to photograph this subject. I'm in the shadows of these great walls and everything now is bathed in even very soft light. It's not about depth, it's not about stunning rock art, it's all about color and it's right here. Northwest to where Arizona borders Utah to see a rarely visited location. taking me to his favorite spot in Vermilion Cliffs National Monument. We're gonna go up on the Vermilion Cliffs, which is called the Priya Plateau. Priya Plateau is a three-sided plateau with thousand-foot cliffs around each side. It was declared in 98 as the Vermilion Cliffs National Monument. I've always been around it. I've never gone up on the plateau. Well, you're in for a treat, that's for sure.
I've never seen anything quite like this. How did you ever find this? Well, I do guiding up here, you know. Yeah? And uh, actually, no, not too many locals know about this place. It's a pretty unique spot. I love the way the texture and the red and the yellow uh, intrusions kind of mix into this really abstract patterns. What we have here is the Entrada sandstone. Entrada sandstone, huh? Uh-huh. I'm really liking this shot. What I try to do in a lot of landscapes I work is use a wide angle lens. And with a wide angle lens, it slightly distorts the reality, but it makes drama. And what's happening here is these really strong vertical lines sweep down the slope and off into the distant landscape. And it creates a really strong sense of depth. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do in this particular shot. I've waited to the last winning moments of light to reveal this really unique sandstone structure. As the light goes down, it, all the highlights are really brought out. This is the valley of these white mushrooms, or hoodoos as they call them. It is so spectacular. This tallest one must be at least 60 feet tall. I can't believe it. And these are really just narrow columns of rock that form as a result of a more resistant cap rock that protects all the softer material underneath. And through the millennium of weathering and rain, it just erodes everything below this tougher rock on the top and creates these columns. This is spectacular and we caught it just in the great light because the whole background is in deep shadow and this hoodoo rises and catches the light. Side lit is extremely dramatic. Great, it moves so fast, it makes photographers like myself pretty darn neurotic. I position myself so that in just a few seconds, my face and the camera will fall into shadow. But as the sun goes over the cap rock of this giant hoodoo, I'm gonna click a shot just at that moment so that it actually looks like a starburst. And it's just about to happen. Now it's happening. Voila. Just across the border in Utah is the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument, an area that's great to hike and explore. One of the most interesting features of the American Southwest are the narrow chasms in this Navajo sandstone known as Slot Canyons. And one of the most engaging, twisted, and narrow of these slot canyons is one known as Spooky Gulch. The deeper you get into this canyon, the higher the walls become. And basically, as floods have occurred over the millennia, they keep cutting deeper into this really soft Navajo sandstone. It's really what makes this place special. I found a great location to work in this very narrow cut gorge. Basically, I found a, a fairly wide chamber that allows the light to filter all the way down into the deepest recesses of this chasm. 
The thing that I like most about it is the way the light reflects on these walls. It gives every little angle uh, a, a texture. It gives it a, a slightly different reflective quality and that gives it a complexity. I think this is where photography ends and maybe exploration starts. Oh boy. Oh, I think I am getting to the end of my rope. At the end of my canyon. I think it's time to explore another canyon. One that's a little wider. Definitely gotta lose weight on the next canyon. Less than 24 hours ago, this riverbed was flooding. And as the water receded, it revealed a very slick texture. What I'm seeing in this just very small area are some really nice curves. The way the mud is reflecting the sky gives it a very sensuous texture. And I could spend the entire afternoon working in this shadowed little ravine and be as happy as a clam. Lake Powell is such an aberration in the desert. This huge body of intricate waterways, open skies, rounded buttes just rising out of the water. I'm exploring the backwaters of Lake Powell with Guide Powell Walker. I love this area. Around every one of these bends, there's a little treasure to discover. Yep. Each turn brings a whole new set to discover. And wow. you know, the nice thing is there's 96 of these canyons. 96, 96 canyons. canyons. So wow. there's a lot to see, a lifetime to see. It's quite a sensation to kayak through these really narrow canyons flooded by the waters of Lake Powell. As you go around the bend, new vistas open up and the walls just reach right down into the water. It would be impossible to reach some of these canyons without the waters of Lake Powell. There's no place like it in the world. There's no question. Yeah. You can't get out of your car and look at what we're looking at. Yeah. You have to come out and spend some time and, and want to be where you are. It's the magic hour, and all the oranges and blues of this unique place are at their most beautiful. Zion National Park has soaring rock formations and unique gorges cut by the rivers and streams running through it. I'm hiking to see one of the most unusual of these with Ranger Tom Harridan. This is the subway, huh? This is the subway, often talked about but seldom seen. What made it so symmetrical? Well, it's a softer layer of rock 
and uh, it just erodes away, leaving this arched shape. As you get farther and deeper into the subway formation, these deep emerald green pools start to dot the landscape and the walls literally arch over the top of you. One of my favorite subjects to photograph are the really simple forms of trees. And I can't think of any trees that exemplify this more than the aspen. When most people think of the Southwest, of course they think of the open buttes and the desert landscapes, but there's a lot more in the Southwest. There's these mountains that rise out of the desert. They become truly alpine environments with vast groves of beautiful aspen trees. Photographers have been drawn to aspen trees over the years from Ansel Adams to Edward Weston to many of my modern colleagues. And I think it's the textures, the beauty of these trees. They're great, great subjects. I have found a really nice grove of trees here. There's such a uniformity of the trunks all lined up. There's no distracting elements. The light is perfect. There's a huge light box with these heavy clouds. The fog has rolled in. It makes everything so much more uh, like a painting. Not only are the trunks of these aspens so beautifully white, but the fog gives it a little bit of distance, a little depth. I've been photographing the Southwest for over 30 years, and I'll probably keep coming back until I can't press the shutter any longer. The region's combination of grand landscapes, bizarre rock formations, and intricate details will always keep me exploring. I'm Art Wolf. Join me next time on Travels to the Edge.